which is fine. Okay. What's up, guys? This is Mike Lurus going to be casting the Esport Heaven Dota 2 tournament. I don't think there's actually anything more than that as far as their name goes. But anyway, yeah, this is just a quick best of one. Uh, it was requested by someone on 4 Love International. Actually, I know them on Skype, but I don't know who they are in-game. So one of these guys. Uh, we've been talking for, you know, over the course of a per long period of time. Requested I cast this quick best of one. And I said, why not? So we're going to be doing this. It's going to be a fast, you know, fast stream. I'm probably going to stream later today. 82 L's tonight, and they probably will need me. Uh, if they don't, then, well, we'll see what happens. But yeah, just a quick game right here, and then I think that's it. Uh, the tournament is called, I mean, I don't, I'm sure there's some place. It's esportsheaven.net, and they have some Dota 2 tournament that's sponsored by Razer. So, yay Razer for sponsoring Dota 2. I'm using two of their products right now. Got my mouse and my headset on, all Razer, so. Yes, it's pretty cool. Yes, <laughs> Razer, sponsor me, please. Please, I need money, please. Razer, please. Okay, so, we have a draft going on. 4Love International is going to be going up against AT and 4Love. Going to be opening their draft up with the Invoker as well as Ancient Apparition. Just taking, uh, kind of, not as new school. I mean, the Ancient Apparition and Invoker are still, you know, very, very flavor of the past three month kind of heroes, whereas Lycan is a hero that, though he has seen some play in the past, is just recently starting to show a really, really big resurgence. Uh, Centaur and Ember Spirit, well, Ember Spirit's not really fair to say because he was just released into uh, CM, but yeah, Centaur and Lycan kind of being even more new school, like they are just, they are what you want to be picking right now, and well, AT for as it stands right now, picking up the Lycan as well as the Shadow Shaman, are pretty fair, uh, pretty clearly choreographing the fact that they want to go for some sort of pushing. I mean, when you pick up a Lycan in any capacity, it opens the door for early Roshans and very early pushing. And AT being on the Dire will have the Roshan advantage if they want to do that really early. Hell, they could even go level 1 if they really want to, though... Well, I mean, yeah, against H apparition is probably just a terrible idea. Chilling touch on your entire team in a in a fight that early will lose you that fight almost for sure. But uh, they're definitely gearing up for heroes that could take Roshan a little bit later. But right now they just want to get their supports down, and I think it's probably just going to be a very aggressive pushing lineup for them. They have yet to pick up their mid hero. Most likely Shadow Shaman going to be played. Actually, Shadow Shaman mid uh, versus Invoker isn't the best. However, if you could just weather that storm you could very easily get to that level 6 mark without too much punishment. Like, Ancient Apparition Rome isn't really going to be doing much unless they pick up another hard disable, and that's not really it. So Shadow Shaman should be able to secure a um, quick level 6 in the mid lane if the AT side do decide to lane the Shadow Shaman like that. If they don't, then Shadow Shaman Dazzle, and then that's just fine. Their objective is to just pull, make sure the Lycan has protected farm, so that the Lycan can get the farm, get a quick Vlads, and then either go for a fast Roshan or go for fast towers. But with the Vengeful Spear pick, that's obviously not the case. Shadow Shaman now pushed to the mid lane. He's going to be facing up against the Invoker most likely. For love though, with the Ancient Apparition as well as the Chen picks, they are, uh, well, possibly going to look for a little bit of pushing themselves. Ancient Apparition with Chen isn't the best combination in the world, though it is com very, very functional. The Chilling Touch on Chen really makes him a threat, whereas normally it's only the creeps you have to worry about. Once you slap that spell on your Chen, he's going to be dishing a lot, a lot of damage. And, uh, well, that's going to be their support cast for this particular game. Still do need uh, two more core heroes. Invoker most assuredly going to be heading towards that mid lane. And we'll see what they want to pick up right now. They probably need a little bit more AoE. Unless they want to just, you know, take pushing for pushing and, you know, kind of just split push, but, like, not really. Just divert the attention of the enemy team away from their, the lane that the enemy team is pushing and just push their own lane. It's a very, very risky way to play, but it looks like, no, they're instead going to settle for just a little bit more team fights. So, uh, once the clockwork gets a couple levels, once Ancient Apparition gets to level 6, then the pushing for AT gets a little bit more dangerous. And Skype, you gotta be quiet right now, bro. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah. Casting right now going offline. Alright, alright. 
All right, we're back. And uh, so there are ready to fight the, the uh, pushes. When you are getting pushed upon, you either want to have a ton of counter push, i.e. Keeper of the Light, random AoE, Lena, you know, Death Prophet kind of spells. You want to be able to pull the aggro, and Chen's really good at doing that. In fact, I would say he's one of the best. And you also want to have initiation, because the enemy team, they're going to pop down their wards, and then they're going to be situated behind those wards. If you could get behind the wards in a big way and get to their back line, if you could Radiant just completely team, bypass yeah. those wards, then you are probably going to take a fight that is going to benefit you. Because when the enemy team is, is pushing, they are uh, generally, as I said before, behind those wards in a semi-clumped up position. And not only that, they tend to be behind as in, in terms of experience. So if you could kind of you know, avoid that uh, the wards and avoid the big spells, through the usage of Clockwork, through the usage of an Invoker Tornado EMP, if Invoker is going to be going for a whack build, then generally the fights are going to be going for you, especially if you have an Ancient Apparition Blast that's going to be doing the exact same thing. And AT, they're just going to be going full-on aggro. Like, it doesn't matter if they're going to be pushing or not, because now with the Axe pickup, they're just looking to lock down the lanes and kill, kill, kill. Uh, I think it's going to be killing into pushing. It's not as necessarily going to be pushing, pushing. But uh, hey, Axe as a pickup is always exciting to see. And for Love, they do still need their quote-unquote uh, primary farmer, though I think if they go for something greedy like a specter or an anti-mage, or yeah, they're just going to be punished so severely. So they really need someone who can put the hurt on early. Possibly a gyrocopter. Once again, he's a he's a hero that could get to the back lines through his flat cannon. The call down also has some pretty good range as well. And if an axe is going to be doing some creep cutting, then rocket barrage is probably the best tool that you could possibly want in order to punish him, just because it does so much outrageous damage just as a level one skill. But anyway, if 4Love could get to the back lines of AT, and they should be able to wreak havoc. However, with the Axe and Lycan on the front lines, that's going to be a pretty tall order for them. I mean, Chen as well as Ancient Apparition, they're not really too tanky, and they are going to go greed. 4Love, they're not scared of this aggression. They are not scared at all, because AT, they could push towers very easily. They could get kills very easily. But 4Love, they think that their Ancient Apparition Chen clockwork is enough to hold them out. I mean, Spectre can join the fights, and once again, it is a carry hero. It is a hero, uh, in general, that can get to the back lines through Haunt. If you could jump on the Ventral Spirit, on the Dazzle, first of all, it makes it very difficult for the Dazzle to actually shallow grave someone if everyone's dropping low at the same time. Uh, with Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, that is very, very difficult to deal with. But Spectre is a hero that doesn't really do anything, like, at all, for the first 20 minutes in the game. Like, Chen and Ancient Apparition could enable the Spectre somewhat with a Chilling Touch, with Nets, Stuns, everything that Chen could uh, control in the jungle. But Spectre, as far as carry heroes go, she does, I would say, the lowest Five amount compared to all ca other carry heroes. Like, Faces Void has Time Walk. Once it gets to level 6, Chronosphere, you can't, you can't argue with Chronosphere. You just can't. Spectre needs a lot more time, and, uh, well, it's going to be up to for Love to really buy that Spectre that time. Because if they get to the late game, then they'll have to deal with a lot of split pushing. But really, split pushing isn't that dangerous with the likes of Spectre and Ancient Apparition. So it's really these early mid-game pushes from the level 6, you know, everyone group up around the Shadow Shaman, we're going to start killing towers that 4Love have to worry about. And then at that point it comes down to how do AT actually execute their pushes? Do they go for these Roshans early on or do they just go sh use their wards for towers? And uh, how does the clockwork behave? Does, do his hookshots get him to the back lines? Who, how many people are hit with the EMP? Uh, I'm assuming Top Sun is going to be going for a Wex build on the Invoker. In a situation like this, going for Exhort when you have little to no setup is probably not the, the best idea. And hell, if you know the enemy's team is going to be pushing, they're going to be clumped up. If you could hit an EMP, then that pretty much stops the push cold, or at least saves them from you know chipping at your tower for just a little bit longer. You could even possibly take a fight once they are falling back. Because once you get hit by an EMP, you're going to fall back like 9 times out of 10. That means the Clockwork has an opening. That means the Ancient Apparition has an opening. That means, hell, even the Spectre has an opening. I mean, I wouldn't really recommend the Spectre to jump in first. But she can if she wants to. And, of course, it wouldn't be a game if it didn't have a pause. So, <laughs> April Fool's stream confirmed. Pretty much, yeah, this is just a... A giant taunting stream, but I'm probably going to be streaming later today, or maybe. And, uh, yeah, I think that should be it. Not too sure what we're waiting for, but we do have the stand in, one of the two stand ins taking forever. It's just going to be for love playing super defensively and AT playing super offensively. And, well, when usually when that happens, it's, uh, it's a matter of how much can for love do 
before the offensive capabilities of the other team kick in? Like, can they get level 1 kills? I would say no, but if they do manage to do so, then it will be a huge for them. They just slow down the pushing, you know, push it back just another minute. Because another minute means that your tower's up for another minute, means that the Master Serpent Wards are on cooldown for, you know, everything is staggered by one minute. So if they could delay it just by a little bit by getting, you know, maybe a first blood kill really early on, or maybe mess up the enemy's Roshan, or something like that, then they'll just have a huge edge moving forward. It's not an insurmountable edge by any means, like, especially with the axe pickup, you could just do some really, really ridiculous things with this hero, of course, assuming you are decently lucky with counter helix, but even if you don't have it, battle hunger into run at them is a pretty good way to deal with most heroes, I would say. So axe is really uh, the X factor, it's a matter of positioning almost purely for him. I mean, that's why you get blank dagger and axe, so you can fix your positioning, right? So positioning and luck, axe is going to be a huge force in this game. So, not really sure what's going on here. I don't think this game is ticketed or anything like that. Once again, this is just a uh, requested cast by 4Love. They were playing this and they wanted me to cover it, so I thought I would cover it. Although, if this guy never reconnects or comes back, then I'm going to have some serious regrets. I didn't come here to stare at a gray screen. I came here to see imaginary characters hit other imaginary characters and then talk about it. By God, that's what I'm going to get. Alright, so this, since this isn't like a ticketed thing or whatever, I'm fine to just chill. Like, I don't really care. Alright, so we're probably going to be streaming a uh, AD2L later, maybe, if they are, if they need me. Otherwise, pets horses? <laughs> no. <laughs> April Fool's stream. Yo, let's just stream like random shit tonight. I'm so down for that if I don't have to stream AD2L. Guys, this is now a League of Legends stream. I really I really am falling in love with this game that Riot Games is putting out. It's called League of Legends. It's uh the most popular game in the world. So it's over 32 billion players. And that many players, they can't be wrong, right? So it has to be that good. That's not how you do a heart. You have to make it stop here. It's really hard to type or draw things when you're a spectator. There's definitely multiple lines going on here. Like, this is several lines that I'm drawing right now. It's like DNA. Alright, we got Poker Kid and Mouse in the house in here. You guys, what should I stream later today if I don't have to stream AD2L? Oh, well, Give me something. Player, please.
What's with all the scribbling? I have to really figure out how to draw that really quickly. Ready? Looks like crap. Give game. Give unpause. Takes a lot of practice, guys. So much practice. Run out of space real quickly. Hmm. <laughs> There's a new humble indie bundle. Get bridge constructor. It's the only one I recognize. You can pretty much just play goat thing for like five seconds. Yeah. Goat Simulator 2 Electric Boogaloo It really looks terrible. Now I'm drawing like the give something guy on the map. It just doesn't look good at all. I'm terrible at drawing. It looks like I'm drawing poop over and over again. <laughs> God damn it. Well, I tried. Punch him. I need, I need to get a picture. I can't draw from memory. Punch him. That guy? That's so much harder. This is so much harder. Holy crap. And it's impossible because I'm drawing so many lines. <laughs> All right, carry on. <laughs> okay, well, I jokingly said 4v5 go, and then they went, so. <laughs> so do you know how I said that 
the aggressive team, like, if the defensive team gets a couple of, you know, early kills or whatever, then we'll be fine. Well, it's a lot harder for them to get kills now because it's 4v5. Can we remake? We can't. Yeah, they just leaving. <laughs> Equal opportunity lag. What are the servers are there? I can't check. We play on C. Thirty seconds to go. Or we can play on C. <laughs> okay, well, 4v5 should be an easy game. Okay, for love. If you lo if you win this, fucking TI5 hopefuls right here. But if you lose this, that's fine. I mean, no one expects you to win 4v5 anyway. But they're going to go up against an aggressive tri lane and they actually just like can't win this lane. It's unless they dive towers like at level 1, which is a possibility. I wouldn't recommend it because if you have 5 people, you just slow roll the enemies. You don't really have to do much of anything. Uh the gold per minute's also messed up. Oh, th uh do they get more gold cuz yellow is in here? Oh shit, they all got a lot of gold. I didn't know that. Oh, Chen's here, guys. Chen's here. Here we go. We got a real game. We got a real match. It is a 4v5 right now, but in a couple of minutes, it'll be a 5v5. Let's take a quick look at the lanes. We got Lycanthrope soloing up the top lane versus the Clockwork. Should be a pretty safe lane for the Clockwork. Uh, he's definitely capable of getting kills on Lycan, whereas Lycan, not so much get of uh, getting... Not so much. He is going to have a little bit of difficulty getting kills on the Clockwork. Generally a melee versus melee matchup. Clockwork with the battery assault got it really handed to him uh, in that particular lane. But Lycan should still be able to get his farm. Like He's going to be under threat later on, but as of right now, he should be just fine. Uh, all eyes on the bottom lane, though. It's going to be a 2.5v3 lane. We've got AT running the Ventral Spirit, uh, being played by Fish. Madbred's on the Dazzle, and M1 on the Axe. They're all just going to be making uh, Arya's life on the Spectre. Just a living hell. Thompson is here to support, but really, how much can you actually do as the Ancient Apparition? Let's actually quickly go over who's uh, who's playing anything else. Jackal is going to be playing the Clockwork versus Vise on the light on the Lycan and Sniff. Uh oh, Sniff. Oh shit! Axe ganks from the trees. Sniff, you are just in the worst possible position right now, and I think you just might be dead. There's the magic missile, chilling touch, giving everyone a lot of damage, but the heal bomb does so much damage. Sniff might freeze, but probably not. No, he will. But I mean, fish might sneak freeze. Fish might freeze, but he doesn't. He does, but it doesn't matter because it's only level 1 skill. Okay, that's enough about that. Well, first blood gets dropped. Uh, the Chen, who's going to give the enemy team a little bit of a handicap. You know, the game might be a little bit too easy if you actually go into the jungle from minute 0. He's actually going to just, you know, give the enemies a free one just to make things interesting. Now Arya might just be dead. No, M1 just going to walk right past and start creep cutting. This lane is why you don't really pick Spectre, although if Madbred tanks a couple too many tower shots, then it could be really ugly, but there's the call. Gonna pull Arya away from the tower. Is there a magic missile? There isn't. Instead, she used the Howl, and now Fish actually taking a good amount of damage, though. Gonna be completely safe. Can salve as well as Clarity up. M1 just gonna co constantly cut these creeps down, and then Arya is gonna be in a very awkward position. Spectre is probably gonna have to get Dispersion. Of course, that will mean that her uh, offensive capabilities are going to be extremely, extremely limited. It will be a very rough lane, and really, they kind of asked for it by picking up a Spectre. If they had something like a Gyro, they would be able to fight. But really, they didn't, they're not prepared for this much aggression. They just can't do it. And now, Sniff might be dead again. Magic Missile, there it is. Is the call, you bet. And now Sniff is going to get hit with another huge heal bomb. No, just right clicks, because sometimes right clicks is all you need. Now M1 is going to get yet another. This is like a double wave of creeps. Yeah, they're going to do a lot of damage to the Axe. Tornado doing a lot as well. Here comes Thompson. Going to force away Madbred. Will actually get a kill on M1. Stuck around for way too long. I don't know why he stayed. I mean, Ancient Apparition was, you know, just right there. It's not too hard to get a kill from that point. Madbred taking a lot of damage on the way out. This should be fine as well. Sunstrike, and it's going to connect. But Dazzle's going to luckily actually salve right after that. So he's going to be just fine in just a little bit. And Invoker, he's actually going to go for an Exhort build. So 
not we're not going to be seeing any EMPs uh, or tornadoes just yet. Uh, maybe super late game, but I don't really think the game is going to get that long. And if they do, really the Spectre is going to have that one in the bad. Madbred is going to hunt down this courier. Run, little bug, run! He's over the trees and he's fine. Madbred is going to run out the rest of the haste rune, chasing that down. It's, it's a worthwhile use of the haste rune. I mean, he's not really going to be doing anything else. But so far, 1-2 to two and AT have a pretty good lead. Spectre does have 9 CS, but Axe is at 20, 22, 23 now. Like, you really can't stop the Axe with the Spectre Ancient Apparition. It, you, I don't actually think it's possible. Like, you need someone with range and damage. And Ancient Apparition has one of those, and like, kind of the second one with a chilling touch, but... M1 is going to have just the easiest time in the world, and Arya is forced to, tank, to you know, last hit under the tower, which is ugly enough. But also tank creeps, that's just, that's just bad. Feels bad, man. Here we go. Madbred and M1. Oh, yeah, they're just YOLO diving it. Thompson's hiding in the trees, going to try to cut his way through. M1, he's on the chase, though. Can he find... No, sick jukes, actually, from the ancient apparition. M1's going to get tagged by the dagger. He will get out of there alive. Everyone's going to be just safe. And, okay, we have another lane, Thompson. Topson? Is there really a Topson and a Thompson? Why would you do that to me? Okay, Topson is going to be on the mid lane invoker versus Snoopy, standing in as the Shadow Shum. He does have his level 6, so Tower could start to drop like him. He is well on his way to his Vlad's, only needs another 200 gold till that, so a quick Roshan can be in order, or they could just go straight for Tower. Oh, the Centaur missed, messed the block up, and now M1's going to YOLO dive right onto Arya. Is there a magic missile? Not enough mana just yet. Fish might get stunned by the Centaur. No, now he's in an awkward situation. There's a Stomp, going to connect onto Fish, but here comes Snoopy from... No, there's no Shackle from beyond the trees. Fish will get chilling, cold feeded. He's going to be fine as well. Arya still on the way out, but there's another Howl, going to weaken the armor just a little more doesn't really matter though because Shadow Shaman has level 3 shock. The Vengeful Spirit is going to survive. Sunstrike has already been used. And well, what is this? Missile. There are there are missiles, so a lot of global stuff, but fish should be fine. Now Thompson. He's in a very awkward position. There is a soul ring on Dazzle, so he's gonna have unlimited heals, and I think they're prepping to dive this. Here we go, M1. We know there's an Ancient Apparition somewhere in there. Your mission is to find him, and he didn't find him. Madbred taking a lot of tower shots. Here comes Jackal. He doesn't have his hook. Not enough man. Needs another five, but I think he'll be able to kill off Madbred regardless. Yeah, Sniff is here for a little bit of... Well, that was the worst body blocking I've ever seen in my life. And he used Battery Salt. He's actually going to let Madbred escape. Sunstrike will do it, though. So he did not escape in the end. Now Snoopy on the way out. M1's got to get in the way with that uh, counter helix. Trying to do some damage. But he's not actually getting hit that much. There is a potential call. No, this hex is going to get thrown. If he had the wards down right now, this could be brilliant. But no, M1 is instead going to be forced to take a 4v1. That's not really a fight that Axe wants to take at any stage of the game. That's going to result in his death. In the meantime, topside buys. Just having a free time up here. He needs level 4 wolves, level 2 howl with the Vlads already up. So this tower is going to take a lot of damage, and for love, there is really no one in the area. But for right now, they're standing pretty much even. Spectre has actually gotten her hands on the kill. It was actually the axe that she was just trapped in the cogs with. Has picked up the phase boots, so now she can actually do some damage and has not been forced to actually go for any points in dispersion. So the aggression from AT is doing pretty well, but uh, they're actually overextending a little bit too much, a little bit too often, I would say. Like, diving all the way back here and having your Dazzle tank, tank like, several tower shots is probably not the best idea. You can go behind the tower, sure, but uh, not not in this re not in this region. Now, they're going to go again, but this is a much easier kill. They actually have Magic Missile this time, and there's a call, following up with a perfect chain stun, and a nice physical nuke from Dazzle is going to finish off the Ancient Apparition. Another kill going the way of AT, and now just more and more creep cutting. This tower is going to go down soon. In the meantime, top lane tower, by, as I said before, with the Vlads and level 4 Wolves, has taken down the tier 1, and there's still no reaction from 4 Love. Are they really going to get this like and get two towers? He doesn't have any mana. Here comes Jackal. Does have a hook. Can he land it? Does he even need to land it? Battery Assault. There's a hook shot into Battery Assault, but there's so many creeps here. The Cog actually pushed him out, and that should be his escape. There is an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, as well as Invoker Sunstrike. Will it be enough, though? He's pretty slow. There's the rest of the Battery Assault. Going to take him down a little bit lower. He's not going to shatter just yet. He's going to buy a TP scroll, but that actually won't help. Sunstrike, it will be... Oh, oh, will be dodged. How did that not hit? Vise is still on the run. He's going to live. Dagger won't kill him. That w looked like it should have hit. That was like... He was right here. That It looked like it was going to hit. But in the meantime, the rest of the team... While 4Love is spending 4 heroes, pushing out that top side, trying to kill off the Lycan, and almost doing so, to be fair. 
they're going to lose the entirety of their bottom lane. Serpent Wards, that was the first time they have been dropped. I think Lycan should... Okay, I thought he was going back to the base. Instead, he's going to jungle, get a little bit more farm. He's going to go for the full zoo build. Boots, you don't need boots on Lycan, even though that would have you know, given him the easiest skip ever there. He's just going to go straight for the zoo, and I was going to say, after getting a tier 2 tower in the bottom lane like that, it would be a prime time to go for... Oh, Sunstrike will land onto Madbred, though he'll, he'll be just fine. Level 2 nuke with the Soul Ring regen. He has Arcane Boots as well, so this Dazzle is going to be pumping out spells left and right. I would have said it would be a good time to go for Roshan, but I guess Roshan could wait, because there's a tower here that you have to kill, guys. You can't just let these towers stay up. What game do you think this is? You gotta kill these things, especially when you draft a lineup like they ATF currently drafted. Here comes Sniff, level 3 on the Chen, though. He's died twice, got 3 assists, but really, I don't think he's actually been there for uh, experience from those assists. Like, he's been way too far away. He's been his creeps. So Sniff is actually just a dead hero right now. Taking a look at the other levels, yeah, he is just so far behind. Venture Spirit and Dazzle both level 5, but in a tri lane that has pushed out all of the towers, that's completely fine. You're expected to fall behind as far as experience is concerned because you're going to be ahead as far as gold is concerned, as you can see right there. Another Ice Ball going to come in, land pretty well on Snoop, but he has a regen rune. He has one set of Arcane Boots. Two set, are there three sets? No, not just yet. So two sets of Arcane Boots. Really, that's all you need, though. This axe is really, really tanky, especially with the Dazzle behind him. They're going to blast down another Creep Wave and just keep pouring on this aggression. There's Serpent War is going to be dropped, doing a little bit of damage to the Ancient Apparition, but really it's the tower that they want. The tower they should be able to get. Another call from Axe is going to find the Dark Troll Summoner, not do too much of anything at all. But Serpent War is still chipping away at this tower, and it will go down one way or another. There it goes, Shadow Shaman, finding the destruction on that tower and killing off a couple Forge Spirits on top of that. Nice little bonus for them, and then they instantly depending out for Roshan. The AT side know what they want, but another hook shot in. It's going to be Jackal jumping right in onto Snoopy. Nice Blast is going to come in as well, as well as the Haunt. Snoopy can drop very low. He will shatter, but a Magic Pistol onto Jackal. He's dropping it very low. Is there a dunk? M1 is going to get a call onto two. He will get frozen, though. The Counter Helix will kill off that Clockwork. Madbred on his way out. The Ventral Spirit getting chased down by the Spectre. He is going to drop now. Madbred on his way out as well, but I don't think he's going to make it out. The Sunstrike will not connect, but that's fine because Arya got a double kill out of that. AT lose four. That, I mean, that was some pretty good initiative from the Clockwork. He got a hand to him, he gave his life for it, but they instantly took down the Shadow Shaman. If you could instantly nail down the most threatening, uh, maybe not most threatening, but one of the most threatening enemy heroes right off the bat, then you're probably going to be in good shape. However, Lycan wasn't even there. I mean, either he, either he wasn't even there or he was there, but he instantly got out. Regardless, he does have a level 2 book just waiting for him. Roshan is still a very, very easy target for them to take. So even though 4Love take that fight and they take it really, really well, they still lost five towers, and they've only taken the top tier one down of AT. So they're still very, very far behind as far as gold is concerned. Almost at a 10k advantage this early in the game is absolutely, you know, monstrous. And, well, for love, they do have a slight experience lead, which with a Chen and the fact that the enemies are grouped up all the time, you would kind of expect... A uh, 1500 experience lead isn't really going to be getting you from any place. And now Snoopy is going to get hit by a Sunstrike, and the AI spot is going to come through as well. But no, it's going to be Thompson who actually finds the kill on the Shadow Shaman. He did have a Serpent Wards up, and that's going to be another 20 second at the very least delay for the Shadow Shaman to push the rest of the tier 2s down. So possibly AT running out of gas. Possibly that last fight was just a fluke, or you know, a fight being uh, won because of good initiation from Jackal. But either way, Roshan should be a rel the relatively next target. Relatively next target? Next target soon. If you speak English, that's how you say it. And there we go. Smoke up into the Roshan pit. However, between Sun Strikes, Ancient Apparition Blasts, Haunts, Missiles, and potential YOLO hookshots, getting away with this is going to be pretty difficult. Sun Strike, let's see if. No, it's not going to be Sun Strike, it's going to be Missile. So yeah, AT, they are completely revealed right now. And Ancient Apparition going to get a Ice Blast onto 3. Snoopy going to give him some extra value there. And one on the high ground, though. He has a Blink Dagger, and the enemies do not know about this. He's going to jump right in, potentially. No, he's just going to ward everyone out. Sun Strikes, Missiles, another AA Ice Blast in 20 seconds. Roshan is dropping, and really, for love, they don't have enough right now. This would be, ordinarily, the best possible place for for love take a fight but there's a little bit too far behind right now so they're going to instead concede the Roshan gonna give Lycan that Aegis and almost a level 3 Necro book 13 minutes in with the Vlads I mean he doesn't have any boots but really boots you don't, you don't need boots you don't need boots when you're moving at max movement speed through shapeshift that's the plan they are probably just gonna 
push the tier 2 mid tower. I mean, there's nothing that could actually stop them aside from a disastrous initiation from the other end. There's a Blink Dagger on Axe, though, so now AT could actually get initiation of their own. A Blink into Call onto two heroes. Maybe you could even swap someone in, though that's a little bit more unlikely. They will still have to worry about all this global you know, chip damage from the AA, from the Clockwork, as well as the Con from the Spectre. But they could jump in and easily assassinate someone if they find an opening. Of course, that is a pretty big if. Uh, you gotta catch someone sleeping if you're gonna Blink Call them. And even if you get someone like Clockwork, he could probably put a lot of hurt on you before it does go down. They're going to go for it anyway, because they've now completed their level 3 book. This is going to be so difficult for 4 Love to handle. Their, their Spectre's pushing out the top lane, so she's getting a little bit of farm. Has drums, phase boots, ultimately not too bad. 3-1-2, the Spectre is doing pretty well. Here comes Fish. He wants a stun. He's going to get a short swap onto Top's call. Will not do much at all. Here comes a Nice Blast. Will hit onto 2. Jackal going to get cogs onto 2 as well, but Vi's just going to go to town. He doesn't have the He doesn't have a damn in, give a damn in the world. He's going to get 1. He's going to get 2. He's going to charge the high ground. Thompson is on the run. Bet you wish you had more Wex now, don't you? Thompson getting in the way of Thompson. With the body blocking bees taking a lot of damage, but he has an Aegis, he doesn't really care. He'll chase this invoker down to the ends of the earth, and he will get it. It's a triple kill for Vyze. Vyze? Vyze? I don't know, I'm calling him both. And he's going to respawn and be just fine. Serpent wards are in range of the tower. Tier 2 tower is going to go down and for love. They've kept their spectre alive. She did get, I believe, two more assists from that. But is it worth it? They're two kills ahead, but they are behind just so much gold. Another... Ice Blast gonna come in. Will land onto Snoopy. Is there a haunt? No, there isn't. Maybe he didn't use the haunt? Possibly. Oh, Shadow Shaman, though. He might shatter? No. Okay. Invoker? Mind's Eye. Read it. Oh, they, no, you don't even need Mind's Eye because you got wards. Three, two, one. I'm expecting something magical. Here we go. Here we go. Boom! The lair would have killed him anyway, but Shadow Shaman is dead in two ways. Sunstrike is a good skill, guys. Shadow Shaman really didn't make any attempts to dodge that, though. He kind of just ran in a straight line. And you never want to run in a straight line. That's how you get killed. See, if you if you were running in a straight line there, he would have gotten killed. But he stopped and dewarded. So Dazzle's going to live. Running in straight lines, guys. It's a bad idea. They get a free one on the Shadow Shaman, but they have lost all of their tower, all of their outer towers. Four Love are definitely on the back foot because even if they get a couple towers, even if they somehow get a little bit more gold in this game, they'll have to worry about this huge Lycan now. Force stab in from the Dazzle, and the Cog go up from Jackal does not have his hook shot, so he will be forced to TP out and Snith. Well, he doesn't have a TP, so he's not going to be as lucky. Thompson, oh, there's a blink in from Axe. He doesn't have enough mana to call though. So that was just a complete bluff. Does it matter? Not really. Ancient Apparition is going to get shredded by wolves. Definitely not a good way to go. Now Thompson in a corner going to try to kill off Snoopy. He does get ward trapped though, so one way or another he's going to go down. Oh no, he's not going to go down. He forced us up to the high ground. Now the haunt's going to come in. Going to go for M1 or Fish or no one at all. He's going to stay up top. I can't believe the Invoker got out of that. Force Staff, holy crap. That was really clutch. That was really clutch, but now AT, they lost Shadow Shaman yet again. He's been like the majority of the deaths, which is fine, because he's getting towers with wards. And this Lycan does have wolves, does not have his book just yet, but he could still put a lot of hurt onto this tower, even, you know, just with Howl. However, Ice Blast is going to come in, Fish is going to drop very, very low. He won't die, no, there's actually no Shadow Grave. He might shatter, or Rocket might kill him. Fish, please, Rocket will kill him. Global Poke for love. Global Poke. I don't want to say it's a thing, but it's kind of a thing right now. There's a lot of books here as well, and another sh sh uh, another hook shot in. Mad Bread is going to go down. I don't know why I'm calling that Shackle. It's definitely not Shackle Shot. I don't think there's a Wind Ranger in this game. I could be wrong. I could be high, blind, or both. But I'm pretty sure there's no Wind Ranger here. Poor Love on the Crackback. They're going to try to equal out some of this gold disadvantage they have right now, but 10,000 is a Herculean task. Experience just narrowly in their favor. Definitely not by enough. They're going to try to use the power of a really high-level invoker for this stage of the game, but here we go. Snoopy getting a four staffed in. Probably a terrible idea. What are you doing? Blink Call, though, from M1. Going to catch all three. How lucky it spins. It's pretty good. Is there a dunk? There's no mana for a dunk, so I guess the answer is no. Fish, though, going to get a swap onto the invoker. There's a level three book. You cannot run from that. And the wolf going to try to chase down Thompson. That's not going to happen, but they get two regardless. M1 with some pretty good initiation. I don't think anyone's been dunked yet. And that makes me sad. 
That makes me really sad, but that's okay. Because I'm sure they'll be coming eventually. Uh, I mean, they have like two sets of arcane boots, and he still is always out of mana. Axe, stop spamming battle hunger on creeps, please. You gotta save 120 every time so that you could dunk people. Because we all love to see that. Here we go. They're knocking on the front door. Is there going to be another miracle fight for for love, or are they going to just lose their the entirety of their mid lane? Ice blast going to hit onto Vise. It's a good way to start, but it's definitely not enough. Smith only has two creeps here. Does he even have access to third? He does. He has a mech as well. Shadow Shaman is slowly wandering his way over. He has a, a level of book. There is four levels of book on the dire side. Yeah. They don't have the Aegis used quite a long time ago. Shadow Shaman, what are you doing here, man? This is how you die, like, doing stuff like that and then getting hookshotted. That, that's painful. That's really painful. Roshan, not going to be up for a little bit longer, so they're just going to sit back. Although, sitting back is probably not what they want to do. They want to just keep pushing just as aggressively as they possibly can. Shadow Shaman's a long ways away from his level 11, which would make the pushing a lot easier. But not if you wait like a million years. Spectre is going to have her relic by then. 20 minutes, still 1,000 gold off of that. But if uh, if AT don't actually try to breach high ground, if they sit back and just try to farm, then the Spectre eventually will get the relic. Of course, she'll have to duel up against the Lycan, who is going straight for uh, Assault Karas, it looks like, right after it boots of travel. This Lycan is absolutely stacked with the most gold per minute uh, by quite a good margin. Most net worth by, you know, 3,000. It's not terrible. It's not bad. Hook shot in. Someone's going to get it. It's going to be Snoopy. The Ice Blast is going to come and he's going to get a lot of damage onto Jackal. Haunt is there. And, well, Jackal is going to be just fine. Haunt in from Arya. He wants to get a kill on Snoopy. We'll get Shackled for his trouble, but I don't think it'll matter because Snoopy is as good as dead. He might end up trading his life for the Spectre, though. That's totally worth it. But it's in the end a 2 for 2 because in the top side is still a fight going. M1 going to get a call onto 2 and the spins. There's so many spins. Snith is going to go down to a howl. It's a complete team wipe, and looks like Thompson gets one more from the Forge Spirits. But M1, there are two separate fights going on there, and unfortunately, I missed the one with Axe, but he doesn't he doesn't have Calling Blade on cooldown, so it looks like there was no dunks. It's fine, I didn't miss anything of importance, I guess. But it's a complete team wipe for, for Love. This sister died, going to set her back from her from her relic just that much more. He's another 700 gold, which isn't too bad, but, uh, I mean... I guess with the lineup that is alive right now for AT, they cannot breach the high ground. I mean, they'll be able to put some creep damage on it, but really, that's not nothing too substantial. And if Clockwork gets a little bit uppity, he could definitely punish Likes Eventual Spirit very, very easily. Especially with an AA on the field. But, 18 to 17. The kill score is pretty close, but the momentum definitely in favor of AT, and now the experience earned is also in their favor. They just need to turtle out, and AT, they just have to not let up with this aggression. Shadow Shaman's still level 9, which is it's kind of not the, not the best thing in the world. He does have a level 2 book, though, so he's getting quite a bit of gold. Their axe is a pipe, which will help them breach the high ground, deal with those annoying blasts and flares and all that other magical badness. Now they're going to go for Roshan. They should be able to take this, though their Lycan is nowhere close. He does have an Assault Caress. Not done yet, just a recipe. Yeah, they don't have enough damage to kill this Roshan without the Lycan here. But Lycan's, you know, he's on his way. He'll get there soon enough, guys. And for love, they just want to at least stay in the area. They don't even have to crash it. They just have to make it so that uh, AT are scared of going in. Because if AT are sitting all around this area, then you know what they're having? Well, Arya, he's just having a time of his life, and he does have the relic up. But now that Vise is here, they kind of have to go in. Haunt is up, and Haunt is really good in the Roshan pit. But uh, this Roshan is dropping really quickly. Assault Karas, still not up. Another Ice Blast going to come through the Shatter Effect. And the Forge Spirits doing a lot of damage to the Shadow Shaman. They want to take down these wards. M1 going to jump right in. 1v3. M1 is going to get punished so severely. Hunt is there as well. He gets swapped out. But will that actually save his life? I don't know. The Spectre not doing too much. A Meteor is going to come down. Won't do too much. Although Mad Bear is going to walk right into it. Snith is going to pop up the Hand of God. Although a little bit too late to save the Clockwork. Fish on his way out. And Arya will not let him escape. Buys though. Gets a double kill. He's going to chase down the Invoker as well. He cannot Ghost Walk. He needs a Meteor or a Force Staff or a Miracle. That would also help. Thompson stuck in the trees. He's going to give up a triple kill to Buys. And it might be for Thompson. He's going to try to it versus Vise, but in the meantime, no, it's actually gonna be a war trap onto Arya. Gonna try to kill off that Shadow Shaman. He will make that happen, and on his way out, he will survive as well. But the Lycan gonna chase down the last or the fourth hero for two double kills, it looks like. 
and summoning some wolves. He knows where the Spectre is. Spectre with the Juke attempt. Will it be enough? It looks like he will be fine unless he walks right into these wards. Oh, no, he's spotted. This is a little bit awkward. What is he What is he doing? Why is he, why is he dropping lower? What are you doing, bro? Because <laughs> there's a wolf here. The wolves are angry. Although, Centaur, no, he doesn't have any mana. Okay. Spectre, is he going to make it out? Alpha Wolf body blocks. He's going to be safe. He just dropped himself down to 20 HP to make things interesting. Like, you got to take a bath in the surf cards from now and again. Somehow, at the end of all of that, the score is tied 21 to 21. Still, this Lycan, though, is just a huge force. That is definitely not Lycan. This Lycan is a force to be reckoned with. Blade Mail can be picked up by Axe and Vise. He knows he's scouted. He knows. He knows that there's probably an Ice Blast coming in. He doesn't care, though. He doesn't give a damn. He's doing so much damage to the Roshan. His wolves are dead. That's fine. Just get a new set of wolves. Fish almost got sunstruck, and that would have not killed him, because I think Shallow Grave would have come in time, but Roshan's going to die regardless. That is the second Roshan. No cheese attached to that one just yet. But I think this is going to give them enough momentum, or at least enough uh, confidence to push the high ground. Snith is going to reveal smokes. Actually, both sides are going to have their smokes revealed. But uh, I think Four Love are going to get the edge because the uh, AT side didn't know that they actually revealed a smoke. Here we go. Push down the mid lane. Fish going to look for a swap, although Centaur and Cold Snap and Sunstrike. Boom goes the Vengeful Spirit. Is that push stop? No, M1's going to dive right in. They really want Thompson. Oh, they're going to get it too. A deafening blast onto the Lycan, and he's going to pop himself against two cogs. Serpent Wards are down. Thompson going to get mecked up, but that won't save him. Now Jackal, he's going to get shredded by Wolves. Yet again, it's double kill. That's like the third, fourth double kill for Vise. He wants more. He wants a guy who's sitting on some sort of bird thing, because he, Lycan says he's the master of animals. But Lycan is instead going to be merciful. Do be going to get cold snapped. He might actually die from this one. Are you going to come right in? He does have the Radiance up. The tier 3 is going to get fortified. Mad Bread is going to dodge the Sunstrike narrowly, although unintentionally. Looks like Lycan actually took a big bite out of someone's Lycan, out of someone's uh, Necro unit. Tier 3 is down, and with the Assault Cuirass making the buildings take so much more damage, that's going to be the end of the melee racks at the very least. M1 as well as Mad Bread both trying to get out of there. M1 might not be so lucky. The Cold Snap not doing enough damage just yet. It's going to be really close. The armor from the call might get his way out of here. He's going to hide, actually. And then blink. Oh, no! What? Oh, there's a ward here. Poor Axe. That's the worst. He could have just blinked north and just ran. Of course, you'll have to dodge Sun Strikes, AA stuff, Clockwork stuff, possibly a Spectre ha Haunt, though. Obviously, Spectre doesn't have Haunt. And Ice Blast going to connect onto Dazzle. For love, they lose their melee Raxes, but uh, they're still putting up quite a fight. The Spectre now just needs to tank up. Get a Vit Booster, get a Heart, get anything that makes you take more hits. That is not it. That's Arcane Boost for the Chen. They lose mid Raxes, and that's really what AT came there to get. I mean, they wanted Raxes. They didn't get the whole set. The fight didn't exactly go as planned. Lycan kind of killed off an enemy Necro unit, and that's a level 3 Necro unit. That's a lot of true damage, and <laughs> Vlad Lifesteals, you're going to need a lot of time to recoup that loss. Regardless, they used the Aegis to break the high ground, and really, what more can you ask for? The problem right now is that Roshan isn't up for a very long time. They have a level 2 Serpent Wards, finally. Snoopy has a uh, level 3 on books, so that's total 6 book levels on the Dire, and I don't think any more. Not yet, although this Belt of Strength of Ventral Spirit looking awfully suspicious. And Spectre, Puppy Paws. Alright, game is close, guys. Apparently there are rules involved. Alright. So let's take a quick recap of the game so far. Not surprisingly, AT still uh, very, very far ahead as far as the gold is concerned. Experience, uh, maybe a little slight dip towards 4 love, but really nothing too substantial. M1, gonna try to go for 9 for Arya, not gonna happen. But hey, your axe, you have, the, you have a pipe, you have Vanguard, you have all the region in the world. Might as well just go for it and see what happens. 
The Spectre is still a very easy kill if you get her your hands on her. And if Lycan gets his hands on her, then yeah, the Spectre is just going to die. Looks like the next target is going to be the bottom lane. It is a little bit more pushed out than the top lane, so I guess that kind of makes sense. They do still have the Initiation Edge, they have the Gold Edge, don't have an Aegis to fall back on, so Slyken's going to be a little bit more careful. Gone for a Desolator, so the minus armor in these buildings is going to be intense. If they drop the Serpent Wards on those buildings with the Necro Units, then the towers are going to evaporate. There is no fortification, only halfway to the cooldown. Pipe is going to be popped, double Necro Units, and Serpent Wards most likely. There it is, not blocking in the axe. Actually, going to YOLO dive right in. He wants someone. He's not going to find anyone. There's a hook shot in. It's going to catch buys, but I don't think Jackal wants that. He's going to hit killed in literally two hits. Arya's going to jump to the back lines. Fish, as well as Snoopy, are probably both going to die to the Spectre, but in the meantime, buys is going to secure himself yet another double kill. He's going to now change his focus. He's going to go for Thompson. The damage is pretty high, but the Deafening Blast means he cannot attack. He's going to try to escape, but he's going to run right into Arya. That's a triple kill for the Spectre, but the Raxes have gone down yet again. This is what AT wanted. Vise is going to come right back. He's going to put some damage onto that Invoker. Is he going to stay for the... No, he's actually going to stay for Arya, who's been chasing out a little bit too far, perhaps. But his Wolves are gone. He doesn't have a Necro unit summon. The Serpent Wards are a little bit out of range. Actually, they're in range of their range racks. Or just three of them. I think Vise could stay. I don't think he wants to, but... Oh, they got the mid lane racks as well. So I guess they get one melee, one ranged. I mean, not exactly all according to plan, but that's just as good, I would say. So now mid lane is completely carved out, bottom lane is well on its way to it. And for love, they are now very, very far behind. I mean, they were far behind before, now they're like next level far behind. Because, you know, when the enemy team Lycan is using his ultimate just for movement speed, just to move places, you know that you are going to be in for a rough time. And then he does stuff like this. Just, you know, just seeing how much damage the creeps do. AT are in firm control of this game. And for love, they just need more time. Spectre's going for Manta. I mean, the Spectre's doing a lot of damage. As I said before, the Spectre getting to the back end of the fight is just so important. But you kill the Ventral Spirit, you kill the Dazzle, and then what? Can you actually duel the Lycan? Maybe if he's completely alone and you have the Manta-style illusion still up, then you might be able to win. But right now, the Lycan is just doing so much damage, and he's not taking much either. He has the Assault Caress, he has the Life Steal, plus 20 up to a total of 29 armor. This Lycan is going to be very tanky versus the Spectre, and I would say could easily win a duel, especially if he still has a shapeshift up. So the back lines will be shredded by the Spectre, but I think ATR is just completely okay with that, because Lycan is shredding the front lines of Fort Love. Now they're going to go for the last set of Raxes. Necro units, pipe, blink, call, they're going to catch Topson. Goodbye, Invoker, nothing you get off there. Arya is going to go straight for Madbred, has a shallow grave prepared. Is he going to use it? Probably should. He's going to shat He's going to shatter it instead. And now from the top side, Thompson doing as much damage as he can, but the wolf, two-shotting the Spectre. He's going to go for Ancient Apparition, two-shotting him as well. It's a triple kill for Vyze, and he's going to go for one more call from M1. Why are there no dunks? Seriously, what's going on? Lycan's going to chase down the last. One shot, two shot, maybe one more from the Necro unit. No. Nope. Three shot, needs one more. Dive that fountain. You gotta get the kill. There it is. It's a rampage for Vi. And that is going to be the GG call. 31 to 32. 31 minutes into the game. And the aggression from AT proves to be just a little bit stronger than the defensive turtling of 4 Love. Gotta say, maybe if they had the Chen from minute one, it would have been. The early game would have been a little bit different. But the plays and the aggression from AT was just so hard to compete with. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm probably going to cut the stream off now. Might be streaming a little bit later today. If you are on the recording, then this is just a quick best of one. So that should be it. Thanks for watching, guys. GG.